We use energy, lots of energy. But the way we manage energy is facing great changes. The world's fossil energy resources are scarce and rising in price. And we will need to find other sources of energy that do not impact the climate. Denmark has a political objective of fossil fuel independence, and therefore our energy systems will change significantly in the coming decades. In 40 years, Denmark's energy supply should be based on renewable energy, with wind power, biomass and solar energy representing the largest resources. But where should the energy come from when the wind does not blow? What should we do with the surplus energy when wind power generation far exceeds demand? And which forms of energy should we use in places where we cannot use the power from wind, sun and biomass? The answer is integration. Integration of our energy systems. In a future based on renewable energy, the gas system can come to play a completely new role by using gas produced on the basis of such renewable energy sources as biomass, organic waste, sun and wind. It is windy in Denmark, so much so that theoretically we could meet far more than Denmark's demand for energy through wind power. Wind power, together with biomass and solar energy, constitute the largest renewable energy resources in Denmark. Today, most of our energy consumption is covered by coal, oil and natural gas. However, in 2050, renewable energy should meet all of the Danish energy demand. The entire supply of energy for electricity, heating, transport and industrial production should be covered by renewable energy. At the same time, we should utilize the energy far more efficiently so that we can consume less of it in the future without compromising our everyday life and comfort, even though the level of activity in society increases. Moreover, with increased volumes of renewable energy, we will establish an electricity-oriented society and utilize electricity in completely new sectors that currently use coal, oil and natural gas. But in the electricity-oriented society of the future, there will also be energy consumption to which electricity is not suited and which will require an easily accessible fuel, for example, for long-distance road transport and for ships and planes, as well as an array of industrial processes. This fuel could be gas-produced from renewable energy. Some of the most significant renewable energy forms that will replace fossil fuels in Denmark in the long term are wind, solar and wave energy, as well as biomass and biogas. Common to wind, solar and wave energy is that the power generated by these sources of energy fluctuates as the wind blows or as the sun shines. Therefore, the conversion of Denmark's energy supply to utilize considerable volumes of power from energy sources that fluctuate according to the weather represents a great challenge. Electricity should be used the moment it is generated. Otherwise, a power system outage may occur. If we generate too little, there will be insufficient power to meet demand. And if we generate too much, the power system becomes overloaded. Today, it is far too expensive to store electricity in large batteries. The most energy-efficient use of electricity is at the moment of generation. Currently, imbalances between demand and generation are resolved by transmitting the renewable energy into a large international power market to where the demand is and where the value of the energy is greatest. But energy generation from wind, sun and waves does not follow power demand. So there is also a need for fuels for generating power when there is insufficient wind. On those days when the wind is still, the energy shortfall in Denmark will be equivalent to the output of 10 large power stations. Although this only occurs for a limited number of hours each year, naturally power should still be available in the sockets when the wind drops. In such circumstances, gas can contribute to the solution. Gas produced on the basis of renewable energy. Gas is a stable and efficient form of energy that can be flexibly produced from renewable energy sources. And as a flexible building block, gas can be combined and converted into a variety of fuels that can supplement the power system in pace with the electrification of society. 
Some of these fuels are liquid, others are gaseous, and they have different properties and strengths. Methanol, ethanol, biogas, hydrogen, and other gases. A gas system with a broad array of renewable energy-based gases can become a vital element in the energy system of the future. Biomass and waste can be converted to gases. Power from solar, wind and wave energy can be converted to gases. Gas can be converted to different fuel types that can be utilized for electricity, heating, transport and industrial production. Gas can be stored and used when it is needed. Gas can supplement the supply of energy on days of insufficient wind and when power is expensive. Conversely, when the availability of wind exceeds demand and power becomes cheap, the surplus power can be converted to gas, which can be stored in large volumes for later use. Consequently, the flexibility of gas is well suited to wind power and other variable energy sources. Gas can help to link our future energy resources together with our future energy requirements. We already produce biogas from agricultural manure in Denmark, but there are numerous other possibilities for producing green gas. Gas can be extracted from biomass and waste, and in the long term, gas can also be produced from electricity when wind is abundant, and thus wind power is cheaper than usual. The biomass that can be converted to gas is derived from various organic materials. We call it yellow, green, and blue biomass. Yellow biomass primarily consists of straw and wood chips. Green biomass consists, for example, of energy willow and clover. Blue biomass comes from algae and seaweed. Some of the gas can also be produced by converting such waste as slurry from agriculture and organic waste from industry and households. Biomass and waste are converted to gas in several ways. Biogas is formed from organic materials in large containers without oxygen. These organic materials include slurry, wastewater, or waste which decompose biologically. The technology is already deployed on a large scale today, especially in areas of intensive animal husbandry. The other method is thermal biogas production. This method utilizes such materials as straw, wood chips, wood pellets, or seaweed. The thermal biogas production process is carried out in large containers with oxygen present. The organic materials are heated and the high temperatures result in the formation of gas. The third method involves the fermentation of biomass to the biofuel ethanol. The residual products in the process can be used for thermal gasification or for classic biogas production by oxygen-free gasification. All these technologies have been around for a long time. Thermal biogas production was widely used during World War II. The innovation lies in the huge volumes of gas that should now be produced. The gas from the processes can be collected in gas storage facilities and later upgraded and transported through the internationally connected natural gas network. The production processes, especially thermal biogas production, develop heat. This can be collected and distributed through the district heating network, thereby fully utilizing the energy. Danish universities and businesses have, through new research, made it possible to significantly increase the production of gas from biomass resources which were not previously utilized, and that without using biomass that can be utilized for the production of food. Consequently, gas based on biomass and waste can become a significant energy source in Denmark. With further research and development, the storage of wind power generation as gas will also be possible in the long term. This is achieved by means of electrolysis. The electrolysis process has been known for more than a hundred years and is used today primarily for industrial purposes. Danish universities and businesses are working to develop such industrial plants for large-scale energy production and fuel cells, which will enable highly efficient electrolysis. Fuel cells are renowned for being able to produce electricity and water by means of oxygen and gas. But fuel cells can also be used conversely for producing hydrogen, carbon monoxide, 
or other electrolysis gases from electricity and water. When wind is abundant and wind power generation exceeds demand, the price of power falls. This cheaper power can, via electrolysis, be used for producing gas. In that way, wind power can be converted into gas in the future and stored for later use. As with other processes, electrolysis also generates heat, which can be collected and distributed through the district heating network, thereby utilizing the energy efficiently. With the assistance of a range of technologies and processes, the energy from wind power, biomass and waste can thus be stored in large volumes in the existing gas network. At the same time, gas is cheap to transport and easy to store. In Denmark, we have gas storage facilities capable of covering one quarter of our annual gas consumption. This is clearly an advantage when distributing and consuming the gas. Gas is a versatile fuel that lends itself to numerous applications. Gas based on wind power, biomass and waste can be used, for example, to generate power and heat, utilized in households and industry, or used for transport in lorries, private vehicles and ships. Given the increasing volumes of wind power, CHP plants that utilize biomass to co-generate power and heat will be necessary to ensure the supply of power also when the wind abates. However, gas-fired power stations will also be necessary to supply so-called peak load generation during the relatively few hours each year when the wind is still and demand is highest. This is a task which gas-fired power stations solve cost-effectively because they are relatively inexpensive, more flexible and easier to adapt to the generation of power in step with fluctuations in wind power generation. In this way, the gas system can be used as a storage facility for large volumes of wind power. When there is an abundance of wind and power therefore is cheap, the wind power can be converted into gas and stored for later use. And when the wind is still and therefore the price of power rises, gas by means of a gas turbine at a power station can generate power. The power can be transmitted to the internationally connected power grid to provide light, keep computers and machines running, or power electric vehicles, which should replace petrol and diesel vehicles in the future. Gas derived from wind power, biomass and waste can also be used directly as a fuel in the transport sector. The gas can be used to produce biofuels for passenger and heavy-duty vehicle transport. Most diesel and petrol engines can be easily converted to run on biofuels or replaced by vehicles that run on gas. Moreover, some of the largest energy consumers, namely shipping and air traffic, can also utilize liquid or gaseous biofuels. There are already huge fleets of cars and heavy-duty vehicles running on gas throughout Europe. In this way, green gas can contribute significantly to reducing the overall CO2 emissions in the transport sector to the benefit of the climate. The gas can also be upgraded and piped directly into the internationally connected gas network for use in households, industry or in CHP plants, which generate both heat for the district heating network and electricity for the grid. With gas as an energy carrier, wind and biomass could be utilized throughout the entire Danish energy system for power generation, for biofuels in the transport sector, and as upgraded biogas for, among others, CHP generation. Alternatively, the gas can be held in the large underground storage facilities in Denmark or transported to the internationally connected gas network. To achieve the aim of a Denmark based on renewable energy, the Danish energy system must convert from coal, oil and natural gas to wind power, biomass and other sources of renewable energy. For many years, Denmark has been self-sufficient in natural gas due to North Sea production. However, this natural gas will run out in the coming years and Denmark will need to find other sources of gas concurrent with its conversion to renewable energy. In the coming years, the gas system could be gradually converted 
from exclusively transporting natural gas to also transporting gas derived from renewable energy sources such as wind, biomass and waste. In this way, the Danish gas network could still be used for transporting energy to Danish consumers for many years to come. Biogas is already supplying energy to the Danes today and the volume of biogas will increase in the future. Within the next 10 years, the fermentation technology is expected to be developed commercially for the production of ethanol based on second-generation biomass. The green gases from thermal gasification will be able to supply gas in significant volumes to the Danish energy system from around 2020, while gas from wind power via electrolysis will probably be able to supply green gas in significant volumes from around 2030. The conversion will result in a more extensive application of gas than today, and thus gas could become a far more integral part of the Danish energy system. The Danish electricity and gas networks are linked to strong international connections. Also, electricity and gas are traded in a highly competitive international market to the benefit of society. The green gas can also be traded in an international market. In 40 years, Denmark's energy supply should be converted to renewable energy. A gas system utilizing gas based on renewable energy can constitute a significant contribution to the conversion towards a sustainable society to the benefit of people, the economy and the environment. Thank you.